a rail yard located in the Midwestern town called Fairville. Even though it wasn't big, the place was considered to be a great home for locomotives. There were four engines allocated. This included two of the oldest engines, one known as Hank and the other Charlie. The yard also houses Vincent, the biggest one in the fleet and the main one to pull the passenger trains. And last but not least, one diesel named Joel. They worked hard, and while things didn't always go correctly, they still kept a positive attitude and were glad to be together. One morning, their manager came to give them their usual orders. My engines, the work in this area has been increasing in the last few months, so I've decided to buy a new locomotive to join the recruits. Great! I've been working my axles off, so it's nice to get some help. What's his name? Steve. Steve? Correct. He's from the San Fe, just like you. I was told he's your cousin. I hope you'll be happy to see him. Ah, uh, yes. I am looking forward to seeing him. I look forward to it, too. We shall all give him a warm welcome when he comes. Next morning, Steve arrived at the yard and was eager to work. Hello! Nice to meet you all. Hello, Hello. yeah. Ah, you're here, Steve. I hope you serve us well. So please get to your jobs. You'll be busy here. Will do! I won't let any of you down! Steve kept true to his word. He worked hard, followed orders, and was polite to everyone else. Despite all that, George always found when he saw Steve. Vincent was confused by this, and soon questioned George about it. George? Why have you been ignoring Steve? He's been kind to everyone since he came, including you. He deserves your respect due to that. Not to mention, you're both from the same world, meaning you're both cousins. True, but that doesn't automatically mean we get along, Vincent. And you know what? I don't want to talk about it. If you really want to know, ask him, not me. If you insist. Hi, Steve. Top of the morning, Vincent. Anything new? Well, I was just speaking to George about something. I see. What is this something that you two talked about out of curiosity? I wanted to ask him why he doesn't like you, but since he refused to tell me, I'll have to ask you. So why does he? For the first time since he arrived, Steve didn't look positive. In fact, he looks rather nervous. Much of it is bewilderment. Well? Uh, well, um, an accident! Yeah, that's it. Once I accidentally rear-ended his train while we worked on the Santa Fe, and he uh, likely hasn't gotten over it. Yeah, that must be his problem. Huh. I think he have forgiven you by now if that's the case. I guess he'll have to learn that nobody's perfect. Perhaps we'll work something out eventually. See you later, Steve. <sighs> that was lucky. The two who put me in that meet. For the next few days, none of the engines said anything about it. Not even a peep. But one day, the manager had a job for George. George, we've been ordered an extra large shipment of coal, so you'll have to take a big train to the mines today. Alrighty then. As he headed up the hill, he soon found that the extra weight began to hold him back. Oh lord, I was not expecting this. I'm sure I'll be able to make it. 
As a result, the conductor in the caboose phoned the yard for help. Well, George, the yard says that Steve is the only engine available, so he'll be your banker. Steve? No, not him. Anyone but him. Isn't there another engine in the yard? Not according to the foreman. Come on, that can't be! Call them one more time! Calm down, George. There's nothing wrong with Steve. He's better than nothing. Ugh. Alright, George. Let's get a move on. Alright, get going, you. The two engines forced all their might. And strangely, Steve was using more power than George. Regardless, they both eventually made it to the top of the hill, and George continued to the mine without even saying thank you. That night, however, the news soon spread about Steve's health and became the talk of the yard. Hey, Steve, it was kind of you to help George up the hill today. You must feel good. And I reckon this might make up for the accident Steve mentioned. What accident? The one with Steve rear-ending you that caused your hatred of him, of course. That's an easy one. He never rear-ended me. It's a completely different story. Wait, what? You lied to me, Steve? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then what did happen, Steve? George is already here to back up the argument, so you might as well own up. Well, it actually has to do with someone who used to be a close friend of mine. Really? What was his name? Steve's old friend was named Lewis, who looked a lot like Steve, ugly different builders. In those days, Lewis spawned the nickname the Pirate Ninja because he was truly that, a pirate. Lewis had a reputation to sneak into train yards and steal trains with better than cargo boards and would later sell all the black ones. Unfortunately for Steve, Lewis's next target was the Fairboy Yard, knowing that Steve was there. Oh god, it's you! Oh, uh, I mean, hello cousin, nice to see you. Well, 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 look who it is. It's great to reunite with you, Stevie. If we are still friends, I request assistance from you today. You mean to steal trains? Uh, I'm sorry to tell you this, but committing theft isn't my hobby anymore. Come again some other time. Thank you. I don't care about your hobby. Listen, I would like you to cover your ass on me so you can tow me into the yard. If you don't, I'll break your frame. Uh, right away, Lewis. It's just like the old times. <laughs> Lewis told Steve to shunt him into an old sign behind the shed, where no other engines would be able to see the two of them communicating. Well, uh, here you go, Lewis. I'm in short commute train taking a half hour, so take care of yourself for now. Not so fast, Stevie. We're not done here. I'm low on fuel. Well, how am I supposed to help that? How are you supposed to help? But get a fuel car to fill me up, you dolt. You mean stealing? Did I say that you should steal it? It's just borrowing. Are you kidding? No, that's truly what it is. Borrowing. Now try off and get some fuel, or I'll have your cat mouse on my shed! <laughs> Alright then! To avoid getting in danger with him, Steve did as Lewis told him to, and went to the science to find some fuel. Hank was there, looking confused. Steve, what are you doing with those cars? I'm the one on fuel duty today, remember? Well Hank, the manager says that uh, there's been a change in plan. You will take my commuter, and I'll be on the one on fuel duty, okay? Uh, okay Steve. Not knowing what was going on, Hank could see swamp trains, giving Steve his chance. Your favorite master. <laughs> Thanks, old pal. Glad you can still help me after all this time. Keep this up, and you'll get away scot free, just like me. Now, I hear there's a train full of copper and brass here to be delivered to the refinery, correct? Correct. Great! Go and fetch it! What? Well, that's George's train! Oh, that old fat ass. He's here too, that's right. Well, I want that train anyway. Go and get it! But what if George sees me? I don't give a damn about him! That train will give me a ton of profit! And if you're lucky, you might get a share of it. 
just scrap him if he sees you, I guess. Now go get that train! Just like before, Steve left and found George's train. He looked around to make sure that no engine, George or not, would see him. When he was confident, Steve covered up and strung the train back to Lucas's hideout. No sooner has Steve disappeared than when George returned to the yard. What in the name of... Where's my train? Hank, do you know what happened to my train? When I left, it was right here on the siding, but now it's vanished! Well, I suppose... Hold on a second. Hank peeked at the sign where the fuel train had been and noticed that only one car was gone. That's strange. Steve promised me that he would take that fuel train, but he didn't. Something fishy is going on. Hold on a second. I know what's up. George started searching for Steve with the suspicion that he was up to no good. You to fail, Stevie. You've done well. Now the real fun begins once I get this lot out of here. There's one more thing I'd like to do before- AHA! I caught you both red-handed! Oh crap! Uh, hi George, how are you doing? Don't give me that! I knew you didn't chase! Smuggle your old friend here and all, and then you deliberately- No! Wait! It's not what it looks like! You see, Lewis here forced me to help- Oh, so that's how you are now! I knew I shouldn't have let you keep your wheels! You're not getting this here after all, Stevie! Lewis, knowing he's on the edge of being caught, shot forward in his attempt to escape. But Steve decided to outsmart him. He went to the switch Lewis on and ran to him, just enough to knock Lewis off the rails. The game's up. There's no escape, Lewis. Damn you, Stevie! How could you do all this after the things we've done together? I'll get back to you for this! If it's the last thing I do! Fortunately for Steve, Lewis was wrong. The local authorities soon arrived to haul Lewis onto a flatbed. Farewell, Lewis. It was nice knowing you. What? Where am I going? It's a penalty for your crimes. We're taking you to the scrapyard. What? No, no, no! I was only- You bought this upon yourself, crook! Now deal with it! Steve watched as they hauled Lewis out of the yard with Lewis giving Steve a deadly stare. He wasn't worried, however, because he knew this was the last time he would see Lewis. Soon, Vincent arrived, impressed by what had happened. Well, it looks like this mystery has been solved. Hey George, don't you have something to say to Steve? Like what? Oh, right. Steve, I'm sorry I was angry with you. I was wrong. You have changed. Oh, that's alright George. I suppose I deserved it. I don't know about that. You're a different engine now. Wiser and more polite too. I wonder why you break up with Lewis. You answered your own question. I realized we weren't doing the right thing after seeing some of the harm tough brains. I tried to convince him, but he disagreed and an argument broke out, leading to the breakup. Truce, George? Truce. Welcome to our home, Steve. Here, here, George. It's great to have you on our team, Stevie. I knew this crime would disappear eventually. Now there isn't a crook to worry about. <laughs> <laughs>